data to users uh, on their terminals. Uh, according to uh, HTTP archive uh, data, of course. What about JavaScript volume, kilobytes? So it's the same thing. We are sending more and more JavaScript. Users are need to parse, to download, to um, execute all this data. And according to the Web Almanac report, uh, average of 37% uh, of shipped JavaScript is and use it. So we are sending data that is useless for the web page uh, getting displayed. So the web is suffering, isn't it? And in consequence, your users and business too. So your users are struggling to load these pages, these slow, slow pages, and downloading all this volume of data. And this is insane. In 2010, Fovians and CA has conducted a study, a behavioral analysis study, about the impact of slow websites on stress. So slow websites are increasing by 50% uh, the stress levels. Users navigating slow websites are getting more stress. So the left uh, image is an EEJ of users using a normal website, which is not slow. So we have a good level of alpha waves. Uh, alpha waves are representative of a relaxed situation, good concentration, and no stress. And in the other side, we have a throttled website, a slowed down website, EEJ. So we can see that the level of alpha waves decreased by half. This is so crazy. We are generating web stress to our users. And let me ask you a question. If these users are getting stressed using our websites, they will have a good perception about our, our website, about our brand, about, uh, about our business? I don't think. So low performance can seriously undermine brand health, reputation, and value. This is so important for brand seriousness and health. If you want to read more studies about web stress generated by slow websites, um, Simon here published a good post about it. So you can check it on his website. So we must all work to improve the web performance um, on the web, developers, product owners, marketing, SUs, CUs, people building frameworks, but also search, search engines, web consortiums, uh, quality assurance analysts, internet providers. It's the responsi responsibility of everyone, every web worker, every internet worker. But it's not that simple as that, because I'm always hearing Phrases like web performance is complicated, web performance is difficult, it's confusing, it's a very technical topic. Some people say it depends, it's not in my job scope, it's only developers one. Uh, I, I, I don't care for web performance, I'm just designing interfaces, I'm just uh, maybe creating some content and others will look for easy solutions for web performance, such as let's just install a CDN and things will magically be fast and no more performance issues. And we have so many, many, many web performance metrics and this don't make the task easier. 
Uh, I like this, uh, this slide from Tammy Everts' uh, presentation um, in which she, 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 she was saying that th there are many, many performance metrics. And each one is talking about another metric. And, it, and it's difficult to understand each other. Right, so Google is trying to make the things simpler with Core Web Vitals. It's a, it's to try to make the things um, more unified. So Google is suggesting a set of performance metrics: largest contentful paint (LCP), first input delay, and cumulative layout shift. The goal of Core Web Vitals is to simplify things. And this simplification have many benefits, such as unified target metrics. So every web worker will talk about the same thing, LCP, feed, and CLS. Unif unified guidance also, so we can share best practices in the community, uh, shares common guidelines and common optimization techniques. For search engines such as Google, it's a way to have the same evaluation basis. So Google could be able, thanks to Core Web Vitals, to evaluate the websites by the same basis. And finally, I believe it's a basic representation of a user experience nowadays. Maybe it's very basic, but I think it will, it will evolve. Yeah, you could put your questions on the up slide. Uh, don't hesitate to, to, to write them. So how to measure the web vitals metrics? There are two ways to measure these metrics. The first one is lab tools. Lab tools such as Google Lighthouse, Chrome DevTools, Web.dev, SpeedCurve, DebugBeer, etc. And field tools such as Google Search Console Report, Google Chrome Exper User Experience Report, and Google Analytics. And lab tools are very good for debugging and measuring performance on a controlled environment. But they don't reflect what real users are facing in real life. They are super for diagnosing, making diagnostics, debugging performance issues, but they don't really reflect what our real users are facing in their normal days with their normal uh, internet connection and with their terminals. At the other side, we have the field tools. Uh, which are very excellent to capture real life user experience. And by the way, they should confirm or deny what we are seeing in the lab tools. One caveat that field tools is not, are not suitable for debugging performance issues. They are just the mirror of the real life, okay? So let's start with the largest contentful paint metric, which is supposed to measure when the largest element, the hero element, the most important in the page is displayed. So this first metric is representative of the loading speed experience. A good LCP should be less than 2.5 seconds. How? to optimize LCP. I try to draft out this step-by-step uh, this -step process. So the first one, step is to identify your current LCP per page type. You know, every page could have multiple LCPs during the loading experience of the page. So it's very important to know what is the element that triggered the LCP on our page. After that, we should decide what should be our LCP element per page type. If you have, if you have for, for example, an e-commerce website, we have the home page, we have 
the product details page, the product listing page, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So for each one, we should decide what could be our best, largest content contentful element. The third step is to modify our template depending and and depending on our choice of SCP element to be sure that this element is the best candidate for the LCP. And the last step is performance optimization. So do everything you can to optimize and to pro prioritize the loading of LCP element. So how can I know what's my LCP? Open your Chrome DevTools console and run a Google Lighthouse test and scroll down to the report and click on the largest contentful pane element. And this section of the report will tell us what is our LCP element. Easy to know what's the LCP on a page. So here we are the product image that triggered the LCP metric. It's also possible to do it with the performance tab in Chrome DevTools. It will tell us many, many useful information, but mainly the related node on the page. So it's, the, it's coherent with the Lighthouse um, result. Uh, so this is the LCP of this page, which is the product image. I also saw many strange cases of LCP, such as the GDPR constant banner. Is it really the most important element on the page? I don't think so. So uh, this, this is a case of a website with an LCP, let's say a fake LCP. That's not true. That's not a real largest contentful paint. So that's why it's so important to master your LCP element. Choose it by yourself. Decide what is your LCP element by page type. Um, I usually draft this type of tables before starting optimizations on customer websites. So I put page types, LCP candidates, and the possible optimizations. So for example, for product listing page, it could be the H1 uh, heading, the first product thumbnail, or the hero image if we have one. For a blog post article, it could be the H1, the hero image, or maybe the first paragraph, right? So last step is the optimizations. So to optimize the LCP, there are three main things. The first one is to optimize the server, the server response time, the time to first byte. Simply because a slow server equals slow everything. We can't have a good LCP, a good uh, first input delay, a good performance metric if we have a slow server. This is so important. The second one is about to reduce the transfer size of resources. Delete what is not used. Compress resources, compress your images, magnify your code, and use SRC sets for responsive images. The third optimization is to prioritize the LCP element resources. Is it an image? Preload it. Is it a font? Preload it. You need CSS for this LCP element? Try to inline the, crit the critical parts. The second metric of Core Web Vitals is first input delay and is representative of the interactivity of the page. So it measures the delay user is facing 
when interacts with the web page. A good first input delay should be less than 100 milliseconds. And it's measured for these interactions. If you click on a text field, forms, if you click on checkbox, radio buttons, select drop downs, links, interactions behind event listener. So it's 99% of what the user wants to do first on a web page. Very, very important to uh, optimize the first input delay. It's frustrating when you when you load a page and, and try to start to interact with it, to fill the form, to click on a link, to open the mobile menu and nothing happens. This is because we have too much long tasks. And this, this is the, the main trade representation and if a user try to interact with the page, we have a delay. And this is a frustrating experience. So since that first input delay, delay, it needs interaction to be measured. It's a field only metric. And that's why we have its equivalent in the lab. We are talking about the total blocking time metric, um, which is the sum of the extra times of the long tasks. A long task is more than 50 milliseconds on the main thread. Of course, it should be, it should be um, there's some correlation between total blocking time and first input delay, but don't be surprised to have a very poor total blocking time and a very good first input delay. So it's about long tasks, okay? So uh, you can go to the performance tab on Chrome DevTools and look at all of these long tasks. Very, very, very uh, long tasks here. So the user would face probably would face a big delay trying to interact with this Amazon product page. So how to optimize total blocking time and first input delay? The first thing is to remove unused JavaScript code, unused libraries. Try to replace with native code. Try to split your code per page type. In a product details page, we don't need the JavaScript code for logging, for logging users, for the uh, updating the cart, for the social network sharing stuff. Okay, so try to just send what we really need on that page, and try to send smaller chunks of code. The second optimization is about to defer non-critical JavaScript code and load the needed code at the needed time. Another optimization of, of the feed metric is to release the main thread network, maybe by refactoring long tasks into smaller ones. So that tasks don't spend and don't cost us more than 50 milliseconds. And why not try, try to delegate code to a service worker in the browser, in the terminal. And of course, watch out, there are third parties everywhere. They are so dangerous. Third parties are, the cost of third parties is crazy. And usually it's one, it's the first culpable of a high first input delay and high total blocking time. Let's talk about the third Core Web Vitals metric, which is the cumulative layer of chips. This is a special metric because it doesn't assess the visual experience of loading. It's not related to speed. It's, it's, uh, it's related to the visual stability of the page during the page load. So, it will assess the elements 
that are loaded asynchronously. Those who arrive late move the previous one. Okay, so we have maybe a banner that push down the text or a new button or a new um, ad that push the content down, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Very frustrating uh, web experience. So good CLS should be less than 0 0.1. The unit of CLS is not about time. It's not about seconds or milliseconds. It's just a number. Is the is the number uh, assessing the visual stability of the page. So the first step to do is to go to Lighthouse report and click on avoid large layout shifts. And this section is very useful because it tells us what elements are shifting on the page. So here we say that there are some headlines and cards that, that are moving during the loading. To better understand what is happening, a useful thing to do is to go to the performance again, the performance tab, and hover the screenshots of the page during the loading. And you will see that the two news sections are getting down in the page because we have a new image that is injected dynamically. Also, we have this line of layout shifts information that give us more context and more information about the responsible nodes. So how to reduce cumulative layout shifts? The main, th the main thing to do is to specify the sizes of each element on the page. Is it an image with an eight? Is it a video, embed, iframe, ads, and banners? Always reserve required space for elements. You can check this CSS aspect ratio property. Very useful to adapt the sizes of the elements depending on the viewport width and dimensions. Never dynamically inject content without user interaction. It's OK to show up a model. It's OK to show up a button or an action, but after a user interaction. And if you want to have animations in your, in your web page, prefer transform CSS properties. And finally, make sure your fonts are loading fast because fonts could be responsible of some layout shifts. You can preload them and use the font display property with the optional value so that you, don't, you won't have a layout shift of font arriving and shifting in the interface. So here's an example of defining the dimensions and the height and width of uh, banners and images. At the left side, the promo banner and the image are pushing down the content of the page. So here we have a first layout shift, and here we have a second one. So the fix is to have a fixed height for the promo banner and a width and a height for image. So we have the, the needed space. We won't show first show the text and then push it down because we have the image and the banner. So the CLS would pass and go green. OK, so Web Vitals, we understand now what are these metrics, how to measure them, and how to optimize them. Um, the big question is how to process on a website level. What are the main steps to follow? So um, I suggest this workflow. The first step is to audit in lab and field and make a point of comparison for later. This is so important to give a maximum of data of uh, the metrics how every page type is doing and performing, 
you can also test on different conditions, mobile, desktop, tablets, etc. Then we should identify issues per page type. Always make a segmentation per page type. This is so important. Then we could list optimizations for every page type. Write atomic and clean, clear user stories. Never <laughs> tell your life in a user story. Just atomic. Just describe the issue and give atomic um, uh, optimization. After that, we are going to implement and test in lab. If it's OK, we can go live. Uh, if it's not OK, we should adapt. And we should see the impact in the field with Chrome user experience report or with uh, Google Search Console reports. Repeat and iterate. That's it. We start with auditing in the lab with tools such as Lighthouse, etc. Always we one optimization at a time. And Google Lighthouse CI could help in the development, implementation, and validation. For the impact uh, in the field, we could use the Chrome User Experience Report dashboard on Google Data Studio. So I'm going to try to answer the the frequently asked questions. Uh, of course, I, I will look for your uh, questions also, but there are some hot questions about Core Web Vitals. So regarding the issue impact of Core Web Vitals, Google uh, officially said that it will have a tiny impact, it will, but it will evolve and become uh, more important over time. So Google is trying to educating site owners to embrace this change, incremental change, and uh, these metrics will evolve over time. Uh, my opinion is it depends on where you are going from. So if your website is really, really slow, I mean, it won't be a tiny impact. But in a general way, it, it, it won't be a big impact on SEO. SEO is about the pertinence of pages, of content, and of course, of links. So web performance is one thing from others, many, many other factors. So websites aren't going to disappear because they are slow, of course. But in my opinion, Unless your website is really, really, really slow, you have maybe a very slow, a so slow server, a very high time to first byte, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. What will be the weighting of each metric? In my opinion, I believe that Google will use the same weighting of Google Lighthouse scoring. So you can go to the Lighthouse scoring calculator and we can see that lcp and total blocking time are weighted at 25 percent cls has a tiny weight only five percent but don't forget that metrics will evolve google is already looking for feedback about cumulative layout shift they're asking for a better layout shift metric for line living. Also, Adi Osmani from Google stated that CLS will be more weighted in the future. So CLS needs improvement and will have more weight. What is the easiest metric to pass for Web Vitals? It's the first input delay because only 1% of tested mobile sessions from Google Chrome user experience report have poor first input delay. It's the easiest one. And the most tricky is <laughs> cumulative layout shift. Only 40, 
percent of sessions of mobile sessions have good one. We have uh, more work to do on CLS on HCP than first input delay. And what about the scope of tracked pages? Google officially stated that everything, every page is captured in Chrome user experience report, except non-public domains, of course, such, a, such as your local host website. So pages behind login, no indexed pages and robotted ones are also measured and uh, captured. So this is, in my opinion, another proof that web vitals are mainly for the user experience and they go beyond the SEO scope. So a little tip is to pay attention to your URL structure, logged and non-logged in sections. So as final thoughts, web vitals are user-centric metrics. What's good for users is good for SEO. And it's just the beginning of an exciting web app journey. So don't panic. Iterate small wins for the long run. Try to, to improve continually the things on your websites. And a good user experience is vital for a healthy business. Thank you. And I'm maintaining the web performance recipes, which is a newsletter of web performance. It's a weekly newsletter. And I'm preparing my upcoming book, Web Performance Recipes. So you can you could subscribe on webperformance.recipes. Thank you. And I'm waiting your questions. Thank wow. you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks. That was amazing. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I wish I had this presentation like a couple of months ago when I was <laughs> to uh research everything because you just like share like the 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 main things that we have to know about each metric how to measure so i hope uh, everyone here is finding it useful for me at least uh, it is and um we have lots of questions so i think i will share my screen now and share the questions i don't know if i can do it now uh, i think if um if i mean if you can stop sharing maybe now yeah. yeah 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 cool and then yeah just before christian just before you go i mean yes. feel, please go and vote there's already quite a few i think we have 16 questions so um which is quite a lot <laughs> so vote for those that you yeah would like to to see answered and then christian is going to go through the most voted ones yes and also, if you have any follow-up question to your question, uh, you should be able to unmute yourself. Uh, right, Fernando? I think everyone is yeah. able to unmute. Trust yep. me, I'll do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, so, should we confirm that everyone can unmute themselves? Or Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone yeah. shouts! Come on, yeah. everyone <laughs> shout! <laughs> no, just try it. Just try it. Yeah, let or us know. You or can you just stop your screen for a second, Christian, so we can see? Oh, other. yes, sorry. Because I can't hear anyone. No one shouted, so I don't know if people can unmute themselves. <laughs> yeah, we do. We do. Yay. There ah, it is. Okay. Kasishka's <laughs> there. Wally's there. Good. We have people alive, okay? <laughs> <laughs> good, 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 good. Okay. Yeah, so if you have any follow-up question, feel free to just uh, uh, unmute yourself and, and uh, go ahead with your question. So, um, uh, I actually have one. Uh, so I saw that, uh, so first, uh, congratulations by the, for the awesome uh, presentation and actually the initiative of the Lisbon SEO meetings. Um, my question, it's not actually a question, it's more like a, um, a small detail. So I saw in uh, Eamon's presentation that uh, no index pages will actually not be um, uh, counted for the core web vitals. Uh, but uh, it's just a small note because uh, actually John Muller said that uh, the no index pages can be uh, included if these pages are uh, really important for the website. Yeah. So I, I think, yeah, John was clear about that. Uh, 
I, I guess that log logged in pages such as, uh, I don't know, transaction funnel is so important for an e-commerce website. And if we optimize all the front end parts, so uh, product pages, listing pages, et cetera, and neglect uh, the funnel of uh, payment, et cetera, uh, it's not a good experience for the user. And um, on the first slides, when I talked about EEJ uh, graphs, um, the, the, the highest value of stress was on the payment uh, mm -hmm. steps. Yeah. You know, yes. so looking uh, looking for the uh, payment cards and uh, handling with uh, um, bank payment uh, forms is is so stressful. So never neglect uh, this part of your website. Think about your users. Yeah, and I, I confirm. I can confirm that I I get really stressed when I have to have any credit card or anything. Did Whenever I choose I the right color? <laughs> <laughs> did I choose the right color? Did I did I set the, the right quantity? <laughs> what about my shipping address? Oh, <laughs> it was my last, uh, my previous room. <laughs> and this is stressful. So I, I really recommend not neglecting these parts, these hidden parts of your website. Okay. Don't just uh, think about the SEO. Yeah, thank you. I, I just have one uh, subsequent question and then I'll... Uh... Leave, not leave, uh, I'll mute myself. So what's your take? Like um, Googlers have been quite keen on um, forcing per se, people to move to, to accelerated mobile pages. But uh, these are quite uh, tricky because um, I don't know, for, for some, it doesn't fit every website, but, the, but they have been very keen on uh, that these pages will, if you have AMP, like you'll have good performance on um, on Call Web Vitals. Uh, what my question is: What's your take on like pros versus uh, pros uh, of these pages, uh, comparing to the Call Web Vitals performance, of course? Of AMP. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, the core concept of AMP is sending less things. Okay. So it's one of the principles of web performance optimization. Just send what users really need on every page, okay? Um, my personal opinion is we don't, sorry for <laughs> AMP people, but we don't need AMP to make website faster, okay? So after that, there is, a, there is some, SU, uh, SU thing, because uh, if Google suggests for site owners and webmasters to implement AMP to be featured in some stories, you know, the carousels, etc. Yeah. It's, it's a good thing, okay? It's an opportunity for SEO. But from a web performance point of view, and in my opinion, it's not, mandatory to have AMP to have a good performance, okay? So okay. we can also apply the same principles to um, on this hand needed code, uh, compress everything, magnify code, code splitting, etc. cetera. It's, it's also uh, possible to have, um, to have a fast website without AMP. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I'll just leave my opinion. Like I agree, I totally agree. I don't think like uh, AMP is the uh, most loved uh, Google's project, uh, but I, I feel like for some, <laughs> for some, uh, I mean, I'm grabbing uh, Pedro Di Pedro Diaz's uh, words here. Actually, he was saying that, but uh, I think like for some type of websites, like it might be appropriate, like, uh, I don't know, for example, blogs and like, uh, or if you're, or, or if your website or your business has a blog and you have that part integrated in, in AMP, like, I think it's a good fit. But thank you so much, Eamon. If, even if you think about WordPress as just the, the plugin part, it helps a lot of WordPress, like heavy WordPress websites, right? Just turning on that 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 plugin, it does really help the user to get that information uh, uh, way faster, right? Because it's you know so many uh, WordPress themes are just so heavy, and uh, uh, I think it it does help a lot. The, the the smaller user that 
that doesn't have the understanding or the development uh, time for, for AMP projects. Sorry, Christian, go ahead. You want to- you no, 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 I'm just reading the chat because Pedro was like trolling. <laughs> um, but uh, actually he's just a sarcasm. <laughs> I, I was not getting it. <laughs> I was surprised like, oh my God, he's like, <laughs> Uh, but uh, yeah, I, I, I think AMP has changed a lot. Also, I think most people uh, hate it because the way it was integrated uh, by Google in search, search results. But I think they have come a long way of uh, trying to uh, sell it or uh, promote it as a framework, not, like, not as, the, in, uh, like as the definite solution. But it's true that as a framework, it helps you or it forces you to think in page experience first. So I think it may be uh, a good tool, but it's obviously not necessary or not uh, um, uh, something that you need to do. And actually, uh, um, with this uh, Core Web Vitals and page experience update they are doing in May, they are um, eliminating uh, the requirement of having AMP to appear in top stories, for example. So I think Google is like trying to separate what uh, what is the SEO benefits and all of that and the page speeding experience itself. So yeah, yeah. I think if, if the idea was says you have a WordPress, maybe it's a, in, and you are not good at uh, coding and uh, things like that it could be a, um, a workaround or a nice solution <laughs> yeah we should yeah. we should notice that uh, uh, starting from May uh, of this year we no more need AMP to be uh, featured in the carousel of stories yes. it's it's uh, it will be if you have a fast website you will be eligible to to appear on the stories carousel yes Yes, I, actually, I was I, I used to work on on uh, on, on uh, media websites that use them, and I was like the other day like asking other SEOs that actually work there currently uh, if they were going to to <laughs> to eliminate them, and they were like, oh, uh, we will see, uh, we don't want to do anything. Like, let's see what happens, and then uh, and then uh, we'll see. But then uh, the, I think the New York Times is one of the of the ones that came forward and said that they are going to do a test. And um, delete AMP for a, like a, section, a couple of sections or a couple of uh, type of pages to see if uh, it really keeps the same rankings and, and all of that and appear in the top stories carousel the same way. It's so, also it's always good to test things. Yes, of course. <laughs> we can never take things for granted in in SEO and uh, in general. Okay, this is a nice conversation. Okay, the chat is on fire also. I'm just reading here. <laughs> Pedro. <laughs> Pedro, you, you want to say something? Go yeah, on. Yeah, just come, 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 come on. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Vote for unmuting Pedro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. Okay. Do you, yeah, do you want to go to the questions then? On yes. The Yes, uh, I will share my screen now. So I will share the questions. But if anybody wants to ask live, uh, yes, don't sure. be shy. Uh, I just see my screen now. Yeah. Yep. Nice. So, well, let's start for the beginning. And uh, the first question we have is, what's your take on using third-party tools, like, for example, NitroPack, which many sales are now talking about it to really improve the page speed metrics. <laughs> Tricky questions <laughs> with names of tools. <laughs> um, I, I, I never use the nature pack, okay? Um, but my, my take on it, on this kind of um, cloud-based solutions, if it works, why not? But again, if you just subscribe for this kind of tools, the team won't embrace a real culture of web performance, okay? So developers, product owners, uh, your marketing team won't make progress in learning web performance techniques and best practices of leveraging fast pages, okay? So it will be, Okay, it's seamless, it, it works, it, uh, it's automatic solution, uh, it brings our co source code uh, to, the, to, to the cloud and try to accelerate things. Okay, the result maybe it's good and passes the web vitals maybe, 
But my take on this is I, I really prefer to, to implement a real web performance culture in the team for the long run. Because the day this tool disappear for a reason or <laughs> for, for some reasons, or maybe you want, or, or you forget to renew the, the, the <laughs> subscription, that's risky. So you, you don't, you don't uh, capitalize or uh, have uh, any benefits. Yes, I agree. I, I think it's a workaround. It, it can work and it can be a solution, but at the end of the day, it, it, you will go much longer and, and, and much better if you just do the work yourself and, and do things correctly, because what happens is that we don't do websites correctly. We, we put lots of JavaScript that is not used, lots of uh, CSS that it's not used, and we do lots of stuff that is not correct. So Absolutely. Yeah, we, can, we can use NitroPack, for example, if you are not getting to the, date, the, the deadline with the Google yeah. Sunadvent or something like that, but I wouldn't uh, trust anything on that uh, tool or any other similar tool. But yeah, it's, it's a workaround. Okay, uh, next one. How can SEOs convince developers of the importance of fixing some of these issues? What is the best way of working together? Yeah, this is a very good question. Um, I believe that communication is key in these situations. Yeah, uh, <laughs> try to communicate, to talk with developers, to uh, have discussions about web performance, okay? Show them case studies. Show them new ways to integrate things, to develop things. And why not test things together? This is so important to, to, to also to communicate about the impact of what they did and explain well, what's the goal be, behind all of that, okay? Uh, so it's so important to, to have direct discussion with developers and, and don't just write user story on Jira or on your uh, ticketing system and, uh, and ask developer to do things. No, explain things, exchange with them, uh, explain the concepts and explain the targets. So this is so important. Um, last week, I had a meeting with developers. Uh, the goal of the meeting was to explain how to read the, the three Web Vitals metrics. This is the starting point. It's so important to understand, uh, to, to understand how to read a report, a Lighthouse report, a web page test report, etc. So communication is key. Yes, absolutely. Uh, in the chat, Pedro Diaz is uh, saying, make it clear how the corporate vitals will benefit developers too. In this case, efficiency. That's a good one. Uh, developers are a stubborn species sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we also, SEOs also are a stubborn species sometimes, like with these subdomains versus subdirectories and uh, all that stuff. <laughs> so I don't think we are uh, <laughs> the ones pointing the finger. Um, Way easier than convincing CEOs, of course. Uh, but it's uh, like a sharing session. I feel like now we all have something to share, right? <laughs> <laughs> Are there any developers in the room? <laughs> but, but yeah. I, I don't know if we have any develop, developers here. Yeah. But if, if there are, I don't know if they want to talk with us. <laughs> yeah, maybe <laughs> not. <laughs> Okay, uh, developers have feeling too. Yes, I know. <laughs> what they did was wrong. They will kick back. And oh, Martin is there. I'm listening. Yeah, Martin, do you want to comment on something? <laughs> but I think a, a, a nice, uh, well, I don't know if it's nice, like a curious, a curious thing that happened with Carpet Vitals is that lots of SEOs like are like. Uh, me included, like crazy, like uh, learning stuff about Core Web Vitals. So what happens to me at least is that when I get to the developers, they don't even know about Core Web Vitals or they know very little about, yeah. about them because I, the, the main channels that Google uses, I think uh, SEOs are like more um, eager to see what is there or are more like uh, into it. So I think, uh, yeah, what, what I do for, for 
for me what works is like I choose to do things myself sometimes what I do is like I get one of the pages and try to download it in local I know it does not the same but try to do some uh, modifications and show the results and they normally then get engaged like oh how did you do that and and uh, that um, that's a, like a way of getting them interested but yeah it depends on on the company also if they have lots of uh, on their plates then this is not a priority or the focus, sorry, Christian, or the focus, if the focus is also on optimization and performance and like page load and so on, they'll work with you and they'll see the benefits straight away, right? But yeah. there are all, always good developers. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, more than bad developers. <laughs> yeah, I, I used to be a developer, so yeah. I, I, <laughs> Me too, yeah. I, was a, I was a developer. <laughs> I totally understand their, their pains also. <laughs> okay, uh, nice conversation. Let's move on to the next one. Uh, not a question, just a suggestion. I would recommend webpagetest.org for field data. Uh, I don't know if you have any comment on this, Amy. Uh, I, I don't know. I don't know that web page test is able to, to test field data. So, yeah. I would love to learn that. It was actually me who suggested it. Uh, it's a really cool tool because it, it allows you to like, uh, you choose what is the agent uh, and the website you're testing and actually performs three tests. And then you can see like the, the cascade of the, the tests and actually the metric, metrics uh, for each uh, of these tests. Okay, so uh, are we talking about uh, a lab test? but with multiple steps? Uh, sorry, I didn't get your question. Um, I, I mean, what, what's, the, what's, the, what's the, of the goal of the, of, uh, of the test with web page test? Um, you can basically, for, especially for LCP, like the probably, probably field data is wrong, like it's more lab data. Um, you're, you're right there. Um, but it, you're able to see like the, the tests that take longer and like uh, it's actually pretty insightful because it performs three tests and you get like a better, uh, a better, I mean, comparison, uh, like not just if you test once the page. Okay, so yeah, web page tests, um, usually it runs three, three times a test and uh, tell us which is the median one. <laughs> I think the big thing here is, yes, it is not field data, but it's also not really lab data in the typical sense that it's like some sort of server instance or your own computer that you develop on. You can pick a device somewhere in the world that runs your test. So it's not exactly field data, but it's not exactly typical off the shelf lab data. I think that's what you mean. Yes, exactly. Thanks, Martin. Thanks, Martin. It definitely helps a little bit to understand it, right? It uh, understand it in another environment for sure. So that's good. That's really good. It's a good. I didn't know the tool as well. Uh, I'm gonna use it. Thank you. Thanks, Martin. Okay. Uh, next one. Uh, what impact can a poorly defined LCP element have on Core Web Vitals score? Yeah. Uh, what we mean by poorly defined LCP. Uh, I suppose that... Uh, wrong, wrong elements? Yeah, if you, if you are optimizing the wrong element, maybe. I yeah. think it doesn't affect because the element is another one, maybe, I don't know. I don't know if the person that asked the question is here and wants to clarify or explain further. Because the as as I understand it, I'm 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 not sure I wasn't the one who did the question, but uh, as I understand it, LCP. So it's the system that that decides what the LCP LCP is, right? So in in the in that example that you gave, Amen, uh, it was the um, consent. The consent. Yeah, yeah. So I think it's like, uh, what is the impact of of that uh, uh, when there's a, a a different element than what we want, right? Uh, as an LCP, like uh, what what can we do, and and 
how can we improve that score? Because uh, as I understand, this was a 25% impact on the yeah. score, right? Global score. Yeah. Uh, but what can we do? How can we change that, right? I, I mean, how, yeah. how we could change that? Uh, uh, at some cases, uh, we need to modify the interface structure of the web page. Uh, for example, if you have uh, a secondary element, which is not the most important, which is a video or YouTube embed, uh, which is taking the largest space on the viewport. Um, so one, one possible way is to, to push down this element um, below the uh, below the fold, um, so it's it won't be triggered as LCP. Okay, so as I said in the slides, uh, we should master our LCP. Should decide uh, what makes sense to be an LCP for this page type. Is it the product image? Is it the heading? Is it the first paragraph of the content? So this is so important to disambiguate guys and uh, help. Uh, Google Chrome to find your LCP. Okay. Uh, the impact of uh, switching LCP from, for example, consent banner one time, another time it's another thing, uh, that that's your, your field results would, wouldn't be consistent, wouldn't be coherent. Uh, and even if you uh, make optimizations, you won't, we won't be able to see the real impact because the first visit users will have the constant banner. Uh, and, uh, and after that first visit, they will have another LCP and the aggregation the data of LCP won't be representative and won't be consistent. Okay. Good, thank you. Okay, next one. Uh, what can we do to minimize the impact of tracking JavaScript uh, in our first input delay? Change your tracking uh, <laughs> provider. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> okay. Or try to work to, to reduce the impact. So uh, tracking is tricky because we need it at the starting of the navigation uh, so we, we won't be able to, let's say, defer or load it in async uh, way. So it's so tricky. Uh, same thing applies for the A-B a, B testing solutions. And usually they are <laughs> responsible of a poor uh, first input delay. So uh, other than choosing a good tracking solution or working with them to optimize things, uh, I, I don't see any other solution. Yeah, me neither. <laughs> or, or have an awesome uh, FID, uh, first input delay, so even when you put the, the tracking tool, it doesn't get too bad. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, next one. Uh, how to prioritize core web vital issues to focus on? I think you just answer this with the uh, workflow, but I don't know if you want to comment. Yeah, I, I just want to say that uh, Search Console um, Web Vitals report is a good starting point. So take the page group or page type that triggers the most poor or average experience and try to, to make common optimizations uh, and follow, follow this, uh, the famous chart of Web, web Vitals report. Um, it's important to say that um, the difference between Search Console report and Google Chrome user, user experience report is that the first one is refreshing. Um, it's the data of the previous 28 sliding days, you know, uh, but the Chrome user experience report is uh, being updated the second Tuesday of each month. So in Google Search Console, normally we start to see uh, the, first, the first thing, the first impact on the data. That's cool, that's a good tip and a, and a good explanation. 
Good, thank you. Yeah, lots of people don't know that. Um, okay. Next one. This is also interesting, as I think also a lot of people is confused about this. Uh, the SEO benefit will be only on mobile, or will be uh, will it be on desktop in the future as well? In my personal opinion, uh, I would recommend to focus on mobile first because it's a mobile first era, and a second simply because if you are able to provide a good experience on mobile, we can, we can say it will, it will follow, desktop will follow. If you, if you are able to provide good metrics on mobile, desktop surely will be better. Yes. Okay, yeah. now a funny one. What's the worst score you saw for any of the core web vitals? <laughs> uh, a website that crashed my Google Chrome. Oh really? <laughs> so it stopped working, and uh, <laughs> I, I also I also had a score of two, I think, two on one one hundred or three, uh, an LCP of forty seven, because uh, there there was a video background on the page, so the LCP is 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 not uh, <laughs> is not working. Okay, I think we should do like the worst page ever, like all the, the things moving around, <laughs> taking lots of load to yeah. just to <laughs> show you, just to show people how, how uh, the metrics are like measured or something like that. That would be funny. Okay. Um, funny. We, need to, we need to work on that. <laughs> worst website ever, <laughs> dot com or something like that. Uh, okay, uh, why is preloading fonts important for LCP? Yeah, uh, preloading, preloading fonts uh, helps in leveraging fonts as soon as possible in the loading of the page. So I think every LCP element is uh, kind of containing some text, maybe an image, etc. So content is so important, um, even if we don't care about Core Web Vitals. Text content is the main, let's, let's say it, text is the main content of the web. Uh, images also, but, but text is, if we don't have text, okay? So uh, pre preloading hints is about to, to tell the, the browser, to tell the browser to uh, load the fonts as soon as possible. So it's important to have the, the fonts uh, ready and displayed uh, as soon as possible. Um, Eamon, if you allow me to compliment there, uh, especially because this is a project we're undertaking now. Uh, we've noticed that especially on, our, I mean, our website, of course, it's on my benchmark, but um, especially for mobile pages, the LCP sometimes can be the text itself. So that when we had a lot of pages that our LCP was the, um, the title of the page and uh, preloading the fonts improved our scores a lot. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, but preloading could have, could cause some other issues. Uh, for example, if you preload fonts and, uh, and you have a switching alternative font, you could, facing, you could be facing some cumulative layer cheats. So uh, what I could recommend is to preload and add the front display optional. So the switch is not, is optional. So we won't have this switching uh, text font that cause a layout shift. Yeah, fonts are tricky. Can you explain a bit more what, the, what does this uh, optional uh, makes in fact? Like, so if, if you put the font as optional, um, it doesn't load, load if it's not ready when the page uh, starts uh, loading, is that it? Yeah, uh, I will send you um, a graph that explains well the, fourth, the four possible values of font display. I, I love this, this graph, okay? So uh, in font display uh, property, mm -hmm. we could uh, 
set it in block. So we, we will wait until three seconds. We won't show any text. Um, and after that, we will show our fallback uh, font waiting to the custom web font to Arif. Swap is about just don't wait. You, you, you show the text with the fallback font. And um, when the web font is ready, we make a switch. So swap could probably cause you some layout shifts. And uh, fallback is, is uh, a near behavior uh, uh, than block. But the optional value is just wait 100 milliseconds, which is not um, too much. And the first font that Arif, we show the text with. It could be prob problematic uh, for brand people because people, marketing people will, will say, oh, uh, I can't see our custom fonts in, uh, in, uh, in the page, okay? So it will depend on the time, um, which font will Arif first. But it's safe for uh, layout shift, pro and cons. Yeah, uh, that, that, this is really uh, useful, actually. I think I recall, uh, I don't know if it was a tool, but I, I think I read it somewhere and never find it again. That it was like a tool that uh, you could put like one of the fonts you are using, like not uh, the fonts that are not in the computer's user. So you could uh, like find the matching um, um, install font, like occupies like the same space. So if, uh, you do that, there will be not uh, a layer shift because the, the size is actually the same. Uh, that was useful for people that you said, uh, like you said, uh, value a lot the, the custom font. So um, yeah, use like uh, the fallback or the block one. Uh, for more reading, Simon here uh, published a very, very useful web uh, post about layout shifts uh, with web fonts. Nice. It's yeah, it's it's really very very interesting post by Simon. Okay, thanks for sharing. Yeah, okay. I will read it. Okay, let's go back to the questions. Uh, we have another one here also in the chat. Um, is Lighthouse designed for three G, four G low speed networks? How will it adapt to increasing speeds of uh, Wi Fi or five G? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe Paul Irish or so I think actually you can you can emulate several speeds in Lighthouse. There are several flags that you can that you can enable to throttle the speed. And I assume that as speeds get better, that won't be kind of a problem anymore. Yeah. Um, maybe I could share my screen. I will show you. Uh... Sure. Thank you, Pedro. You you gave me an idea. So I, I think you can share now. Yeah, you try. Yeah. So uh, as you know, in uh, Chrome DevTools, we have um, a useful tool uh, which is called Network Conditions. So uh, for those who don't have this tool, it's uh, you should click on More Tools and choose Network Conditions. And uh, in fact, you could uh, choose one of the presets of internet connection uh, conditions or even define a custom profile, okay? So for example, if, uh, if you want to, to create a 5G profile, uh, you have just to, to define the download, upload and the latency parameters, okay? And after that, uh, just run Lighthouse with this uh, network conditions uh, enabled. Okay, yeah, that's nice. Yeah, anyway, <laughs> in, in 5G, I think, or in very, very good connections, uh, probably you don't have a problem now. And in the future, I suppose that as uh, the metrics um, gets better for everyone, maybe the web vitals also get the bar a bit uh, lower. So they, uh, instead of 2.5 seconds for LCP, it gets two seconds or one and a half, something like that. 
but yeah, I, I wouldn't worry too much about fast connection. <laughs> uh, they are not the problem now. Okay, uh, let's continue. Uh, uh, it's uh, 10 minutes to 8. I don't know if you have more time, Eamon, uh, until 8 to uh, yeah, answer. Yeah, with pleasure. Okay, that's nice. So let me share my screen again. Okay, okay, not a question, but seeking clarification. Is it more important to focus on above default elements user expects to use immedi immediately after entering a page? Absolutely. Always focus on the above default elements because it's the starting point, the starting journey of your users. You Including, can yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Thanks, Eamon. Great one. So, so should we focus on even call to actions? Because when you say when I'm uh, I'm actually not a web developer, this is more me pursuing like uh, personal goals. I do work with developers, um, so I'm just trying to get an idea of of whether call to actions, like small buttons on a page, would also need to be uh, sort of optimized this way. Thanks. Yes. Um, so. In my opinion, the first thing to, to fo focus on is the above the fold uh, viewport region, okay? And then we can asynchronously uh, load things uh, on the page, differ uh, images, differ scripts, non-critical uh, scripts or non-critical resources. Uh, of course, if you have buttons uh, with text, we should pri prioritize the loading of web funds and the CS CSS code responsible for rendering these elements. Uh, that makes total sense. Thanks. And uh, thanks for the presentation. Good job. Thank you. OK, next one. Uh, do you think there will be a big impact in Google search results in May when Core Web Vitals will be a ranking factor? Well, I think you already <laughs> answer but i don't know if you want to clarificate a bit more about i will the... just add the magic word it depends <laughs> <laughs> we're missing uh, that yeah <laughs> nice okay um uh, uh francisco Pei, i think you asked this one slide yeah, before already. about, <laughs> about I'm Sorry, again. yeah it was me it was me <laughs> i didn't know we were gonna have like face to face questions uh, it's okay it's okay no worries um also no index page about no index pages uh i i think um i, I think i i, I wonder like What's the the reason they 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 measure no index pages? So I suppose it's uh, because if they detect like I don't know, you have a category page, and you have lots of categories, and half of them are no indexed, so that data could feed the 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 index indexed um, pages, I suppose. Because if they if they are not indexable, obviously the 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 core web vitals won't affect them in terms of SEO. Um, so yeah, I, I don't know if there is any, any other reason why they would take that into account. Uh, well, because the values are gathered from field data from Chrome UX report. So the new index has no bearings on that. Yeah, it's yeah. Chrome that collects the data. Yeah, it's Chrome. Yeah, th uh, th thanks for the clarification. Yeah, but I mean, that data, it's useful only for indexable pages in terms of uh, SEO purely, I, I mean, because the no indexable pages won't ever appear on search results, so they won't get any benefit or any kind of... No, but that still does not mean that the data might not show up. And if it somehow then gets batched into a, a category or into a group with other pages that are indexed, then it can have an impact. Yeah. Okay. Also, um... We, we could consider the websites that have online tools, you know, for example, a tool for building floor plans. And this is the main aim of this website. So maybe this website has a landing page and a home page, but the most of uh, spent time on this website is in the logged in part. Okay. So in my opinion, I think it's valuable to gather this data and maybe uh, if, if we, we don't just stop at SEO scope it's it's for user experience um, benefits 
Sure, totally agree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, next one. Uh, how we know? How we decide, or how do we know what is our LCP? How do we how do we identify it? Yeah, I I think I just I already answered this question. But if you want, I can share my screen and um, make a live audit and sure. And, that would yeah, be <laughs> let's do it. <laughs> Yeah, your slides were very clear, and it was really insightful to me because I've, uh, I've, I've never seen it before. So it was so good. Thank you. So uh, let's go to Amazon. I don't work for Amazon, huh? but uh, <laughs> I always take it as. By the way, Amen, it would be great to also see the the best website score you've seen, right? If you have that one, that one in mind, we've talked about the 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 poorest. Uh, it would be great to see the the best. Okay, um, so here we have a product page on Amazon, and we are going to run a Google Lighthouse test. Of course, uh, we are not in the perfect conditions to run a lighthouse test because we are making video call and we have <laughs> <laughs> internet uh, shared with uh, multiple tasks. Um, so it could impact the score of, of our tests. Uh, so when you test uh, websites or web pages with lighthouse, uh, try to do it on a dedicated and clean Google Chrome uh, profile no cookies, no uh, cache, no history of navigation, no extensions, etc. And try to kill or stop all the other applications uh, running on the background on your machine to have the least um, level of variability. So uh, we have our Lighthouse uh, report here. So we scroll down until largest control paint element. And a new cool feature of Google Lighthouse uh, 7.2, I think, is the possibility to zoom on the LCP element. And this is great. Uh, so when, sorry, when I hover the element, so um, at the right side on the screen, we see that uh, it's selected. On the, on the screen. And if we click on this node, we are directly going to the part of the code responsible for our LCP element. That's it. There are other possible ways to do it with performance, um, performance uh, panel uh, or doing it with programmatic way. It's really good. Nice, thank you, thank you. Welcome. And I, I think there was a second part of the question saying how to choose it. How to, how to decide which element should be our LCP. Um, my answer is, it should make sense. What is the most, what is the most valuable information on this page? Is it maybe the name of the product? or the photo or the image of the, of the product. I don't know. So try to, to list out the, the, the several candidates for your LCP and try to make them show faster. This is the thing. But actually, because I think you, you talk about that in your presentation, which uh, leads me to another question that may be on the top of mind of uh, other people, or maybe just my own, but will you be sharing the slides? <laughs> yeah, of course. Oh, that would be wonderful. Thank you. Yeah, we can send it to everyone. Uh, yeah, that, uh, I will share you the link and uh, feel free to share it. Perfect. Thank you so much. Welcome. Is there any other question, Christian? Yeah, uh, we have uh, two last, one last question, which is how can you measure a uh, fast input delay without, without making a connection with total blocking time? Okay. Uh, 
a little bit tricky because uh, total blocking time is a probability is is a it's just an estimation of the global blocking time, uh, which is not the same thing as the real delay after a real user interaction. Okay, so uh, don't be surprised to have a poor total blocking time on lab and ve very good score of feed in field. Uh, it's a little bit tricky. Uh, we, we should work with both of this met these two metrics to, to work on the interactivity part of Core Web Vitals. Uh, so my recommendation will be to try our hard on having a good social blocking time. But I know the reality of things on, on, on the nowadays web, it's really difficult to have a good total blocking time with all the third parties scripts, with all the main <laughs> dash <laughs> script.js files, with all the AngularJS uh, bundles, etc., uh, etc. Et so it's not easy. But the, the really the, the first, uh, the good starting point is to go to the long tasks panel. And every red uh, triangle here is a long task. So this one is about uh, 54 milliseconds. We are, we are just uh, tracked, triggered as, as a long task because we have uh, four milliseconds um, up uh, of, the, of the limit. So try to understand what it's about and try to refactor code uh, try to make the code simpler. It's a it's a good practice. It's a good starting point to to write uh, less consuming code and uh, more performant one. Nice, nice. Thanks. That I think we had lots of good questions, and uh, this is was this was actually really 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 insightful, as Diego was saying. Uh, I hope. Uh, I think it's eight now, so we have to. Uh, start ending the event. I think every, I, th I hope everyone um, uh, liked the presentation and the, the, the format and the event. I think uh, it was really useful. Thank you, Amen, because uh, Thank you yeah, for having me. <laughs> I think, yeah, this, this presentation, you, if you send it, it will be like uh, going through a lot of people and companies because it explains so well, like the main stuff, like straight to the point. And I think uh, now that everyone is focusing on this because uh, of Google's announcement, it will be really useful. Um, yeah, everybody, everybody's saying thank you also here in the chat. Um, well, we will have more events. Uh, we will uh, update uh, via the newsletter. Uh, don't forget to check also in our website in lisboseomeetup.pt that we have a new SEO job section. Uh, if you know any uh, job offers or you want to share something there, just write us. And uh, also, if anyone here wants to give a presentation about anything they are um, they care about or they 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 love the topic, feel free to write us. We welcome everyone. Uh, we are always looking for uh, people to that want to present and uh, to do a topic. So yeah, don't don't be shy. Just uh, reach out to us, and and we will uh, manage to find time. And I think that's it. Uh, thank you, everyone. Thank, thank you, everyone. It's See you been next a real time. Pleasure. Thanks for joining. See you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.